Guys, welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are working on the blasphemy build on some cooling and routing and some general, let's get everything together in the engine compartment ing. Dudes, dudette. My name is Michael. Behind me is a 1969 Porsche 911 S. I bought it as a gutted race car. I've converted it back into a street car. It now has a twin turbo Subaru Easy 30 r flat six. And where I'm at with the project is it's been started. It has fired up. It sounds amazing. <laughs> But that was only for like a couple of seconds. And the reason why is because I haven't had all of my coolant lines installed yet. This particular motor, the EZ30R, has all kinds of different coolant ports that, frankly, first I needed to find out what they did and where they went and what their function was. And then how to either block them or put AN fittings into them or somehow modify them in a way that I can not only feed the engine with coolant, but the turbos as well. So that has been a bit of my engineering challenge. So on today's show, we're gonna do a couple things. Number one, I've gotta get the oil system completely sorted out. And the oil right now has to go from the engine block, feed both turbos, and then drop back down into the oil pan. So one of the first things I'm gonna to do today is drain the oil, which only has about 45 seconds of use on it. So I bought another brand new oil drain pan to put the oil in so I can put it back in the engine. But I'm gonna pull the small oil pan off the bottom and weld a bung on it uh, so that I can drain the oil from the turbos back into the oil pan. And for the coolant stuff, I will take you kind of first person and show you the engine and what we're gonna do. So I've actually made a bit of progress on the engine since you've last seen me. If you've been watching, you saw me make this piece, which goes here and wraps around the side, uh, eventually going to the coolers in the front of the car. What you have not seen yet is I have drilled and tapped these ports right here. And there's two of them. There's one here and there's one here. And they're gonna actually feed my coolant reservoir that's gonna go here. I'll show that to you in a second. These fittings make it obviously a lot easier to connect modern things. And so I'm going to have the reservoir here. And then this bad boy, I'm told, is an oil feed. So my plan is to pull an oil line here, split it to the turbos, uh, bring it into the turbos, and then drain it down into the oil pan, which is obviously right here. So I've got to drain the oil and pull this bad boy off. If you saw my video when I did it with uh, Home Built by Jeff, I got rid of this um, dime PSI line and I ended up running a line basically right from here directly into the cooler uh, without passing go. I kind of went underneath and came out here and that did a couple of things. Number one, it eliminates this big loop, which is a high spot or an air bubble at the top of the fender. So that's great but also it just shortens the entire process and it's less interfering because the wheels were actually hitting these lines. So that's why I'm gonna do this. So that's all part of the plan today. First, we're gonna attack the oil pan and uh, drain this bad boy and see if we can get the thing down. I've also gotten the flanges, the correct flanges, so I can actually redo my headers and move the turbos where I want them, but that may not happen in this particular episode. So there's a bunch of gasket material on this um, oil pan cover here. I'm gonna cut it off with a razor blade first before I get into it. I've already kind of wiped it down and degreased it. And now I'm just trying to clean the edge up. Clean as a whistle. All right, I've got this steel bung here that's gonna act as my oil drain. It's a dash 10 fitting. 
and I need to basically find a spot on this oil pan that's gonna work. And I also have to make sure that like you can still, you know, get a wrench in and tighten the thing down. All right guys, time to get super jealous of my TIG welding skills once again. I've got this piece here on the bench. I'm giving it a nice clean inside and out with acetone. It is gonna be a little tricky to get in, but I'm hoping I'll be able to uh, maybe weld it from the inside, so it should be no problem. I've got a nice new tungsten. As you guys know, I'm a master TIG welder. I'm using a 3M scrubby to polish this thing up. As we've learned, TIG is very finicky. And we're gonna clean this bad boy up as well. You'd be amazed how much dirt and um, grease, even when you have something that looks really clean, like, I'll show you in a second. This is how dirty that is. See how dirty that is? And it looks polished and clean, but here we are. All right, guys, it looks really, really good. See, the TIG wells look perfect. See? They've done, they look like, you can't believe it. Like, this is just full weld porn right here. You can just tell just by how perfect these beads are. You guys see it okay? No problem, it's not blurring or anything? Yeah, it looks really good. So, we'll just move on from there. Now that my oil pan is drying, I'm going to swap out my coolant line, which you guys saw like two videos ago when I did my home built by Jeff, that thrash video trying to get this car done or that car done for Ren Sport. I replaced my dime PSI coolant line that wraps underneath the fender like this uh, with a much shorter version. So I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna show it on film because I've already shown it on film, but I'm gonna do that right now and then get back to you in just a sec. One down, one to go. All right, it is the next day, and my oil pan is looking great. Again, with my perfect welds, just check them out. They look really good. I have here some Permatex uh, black, which apparently is what you use to seal uh, oil pans like this. Well, I haven't done a whole lot of this, to, if I'm being honest, but uh, the move is apparently to lay one continuous bead around the whole thing and then circle all the bolt holes so let's do that now. All right. So you can see we are all ready. This thing is going to probably goop out quite a bit, but that's okay. Let's get this thing installed. I actually need to remove this. This, uh, These two are the coolant uh, inlet tubes, they sort of go where the thermostat is here. And I'm gonna use this one probably, but this one I'm not. But since the oil pan is off, it makes it a lot easier to get a pair of pliers on here and get this thing out. So I'm actually gonna do that now while I'm in here. So for those coolant holes that I have uh, in the engine, I've picked up a bunch of these little plugs and uh, a tap kit that will work for them. So while I'm in here now, I'm actually going to tap this thing and um, and probably put a little sealant on this and just get it in there so it's it's sealed. If I ever need it, what's cool about this is that I can always screw a, a, a pipe thread, an NPT thread into it, and then have like a, an AN fitting. So if I have some other reason to drain coolant into one of these holes, I can make that uh, an easy choice down the road. Well, that was a pain in the ass of an hour couple things. Um, 
I had a lot of problems with the, I thought I had the right like taps and plugs and just didn't seem to go the way I wanted it to. I think the plugs I have are just a teeny bit, like 1 16th of an inch too big for the tap I have, so it didn't work. I ended up having to use a different fitting, uh, like an NPT fitting um, with a AN sort of adapter on the end, and then I plugged the adapter, but that is not ideal, so I'm going to figure that out. Next, I had put all of this, uh, I think it's called RTV on here, expecting to put this thing up, and then I did the the plug thing, which took way longer than I expected it to, so this kind of got hardened up. That's not the problem. The problem is, and this is not anticipated, and this is a rookie error, is that I put my bung right above, or rather right below, uh, a bolt hole, and I can't fit the standard bolt in there. So I put an Allen bolt in there, but that's not working either. So I'm probably gonna have to enlarge this hole a teeny bit just so I can fit the original bolt back in. Uh, but I have to kind of wait and get all this RTV off and sort of do it all over again. So, <sighs> Let me catch you up on what I've done already before I jump into the next phase of this video. And before I forget, at the Ren Sport reunion, I want to say his name was Jacob. I could be wrong. From uh, Porsche Classic stopped me and said they watch all these videos, which is super flattering. But if that is you and you are one of the Porsche Classic employees that watches my videos, please reach out to me on Instagram at Wrench. I have an idea for a very cool project that we could collaborate on. So find me if you can. All right, so next phase of this project, uh, let me show you what I've done and what we're gonna do now. Starting from the bottom to the top here, I've done a couple things. One, I've threaded and tapped this uh, radiator inlet here, and then also welded a bung onto this one. So the hope here is that I can use this as the drain for my turbos. I don't need this one right now, and then this connects to the front of the car uh, to that second radiator. So then on the top side, I have tapped each one of these two outlets, which are going to feed this bad boy, which is my overflow tank. And I need to make a bracket now. So I think we'll do a little cardboard aided design first and then get this thing set where it needs to go. I then have an outlet on this side, which I think I can use to feed the turbos here. Alternatively, I can use this one to go to the overflow tank and use this one to go to the turbos. Have not figured that out yet. And then in the front of the car, I have my hoses run here and then they come around and loop into the radiators here. Uh, I don't have the clamps yet, but the clamps will hold this thing to the body. Uh, so I'm waiting for those to come in and uh, that will tighten up this entire process and make it so the wheels can get in here and not interfere with these long hoses. So this overflow tank from Racetronics is what I'm gonna use for all of my swap kits. So this thing that I need to make now actually needs to be like the first prototype. So I'm going to CAD this, otherwise known as cardboard aided design, and get this kind of first prototype done. So once that's done, I'll scan it and measure it and get it into CAD, into Fusion 360, so I can send it over to Send, Cut, Send, and have like a standard bracket that whenever I get my swap kits, um, I'll have a few of these on hand, and I can just bolt this thing right to it here, and that'll be perfect for all the swaps. Well, I found a pizza box that actually has a really nice cutout here that happens to beautifully wrap around these two inlet runners. So that's nice. So what I'm gonna do here is start modding this piece of cardboard until it works. I've made judicious use of this piece to help me mold my bracket. And this thing goes under here. 
it bolts right on and then this will go right in its right on top so i'm going to have to tape a little extension piece on this i think no big all right so this overflow tank has a little bracket on it uh held on by three allen bolts so i'm just going to pull the allen bolts and get the bracket onto this where i've just made a little mark Checking if this is right. Okay. All right, here's the bracket thus far. All right, I just did a quick little test fit, which was really solid. Basically it mounts like that and it looks good. So I'm gonna move on to 18 gauge sheet metal with this piece. We're gonna see that first, see if that works. And then once that works, I will potentially move on to aluminum. All right, I got my holes drilled and we are pretty darn close here. All right, moment of truth is to make this 90 degree bend where it's supposed to be. And uh, yeah, let's go. See how we did. Let's see what she's won. Pretty awesome. Now, the production version of this, uh, I'll probably cut a bunch of holes and, and try to lighten the whole thing up. But uh, let's see if it fits. Oh, come on. I mean, that's like a glove. Stop it, O'Neal.
totally freaking awesome. Here's your high pressure. Fantastic. Oh, that came out great. Fantastic. Fill it right there. Yeah, dude. Love it. Ooh, I could put a big old wrench logo right there. That'll be cool. This came out great. Uh, again, this is going to be the prototype for my kits, which I'm super excited about. This is a not permanent. Obviously, it's a little bit a uh, little loosey goosey because it's just made out of 18 gauge steel. But imagine this in aluminum and uh, anodized black or powder coated black. Maybe a little wrench logo right here, uh, laser cut into it. And then here, I don't know if you can see, there's clearance issues right here. So like this thing right here, this top, I'm going to use a hole saw and put a hole through there so I can run a short coolant line right from there right into this guy to uh, feed the bottom. And then this thing can act as a vent or um, I can use the other one as a drain. Like there's a million different things I can do with this. So I am totally stoked. And uh, there you go. Well, gents, it's been a little minute since I got a chance to do some actual work on the Blasphemy build. I'm super stoked about today, getting the front coolant lines done, getting those bungs welded in, and obviously getting the bracket done for the overflow tank is all awesome. I wanna also thank every single one of you that donated to the GoFundMe for this crazy squatter situation I have. Uh, now that the person is out of the house, they have now caused a bunch of problems where they are. So unsurprising, but thank you guys for donating. If you haven't already, watch my last video. And uh, if you feel compelled, feel free to help. Uh, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. You guys keep on rocking. We'll talk to you next time.